Good evening. Um, okay. um, so my name is Muriel Thierry, and uh, on the behalf of the committee, I would like to welcome you to the SAGES onboarding Zoom session for new members, but also um, get to know SAGES if you're not a member. Um, we have a few Zoom tips uh, for the webinar or uh, this meeting. Uh, please post questions in the chat and also uh, keep yourself on mute. Um, and I just wanted to thank all the international members and uh, all those that are on the West Coast and are just finishing up cases and are, uh, and are joining in. And also our international members who are potentially either waking up very early or uh, not even haven't gone to sleep yet. Um, so I just wanted to uh, introduce also Debbie Angelman and Nabil Obit, who are uh, the co-chairs for the membership committee. I don't think they have joined us yet. Uh, Nabil Obit actually just had a newborn. Uh, and Debbie, I think, is uh, uh, currently unavailable. But I just wanted to introduce them to you. And I also would like to introduce the backbone of uh, our committee, our very hardworking SAGE staff, which is uh, D. Barry, uh, Carla Bryant, um, and also Julie Miller and Tyler Hinojosa. Uh, I, I think Dee is uh, behind the Sages logo, and then Carla, as you can see here, is <laughs> on her own, uh, under her own name. Um, so we, this is the agenda for tonight. We uh, shortly, I'll have Dr. Mellinger welcome the new members as well as greet the non-members, um, and uh, you know, let them know about Sages. Uh, and then I'll briefly mention and go over the, the member uh, benefits and opportunities. Uh, and uh, after that, Linda Zeng is going to uh, discuss some of the work of uh, global affairs. Uh, Dr. Michael Awad is going to discuss uh, what is happening in the resident and fellow training committee um, and also discuss a little bit about OWLs. And then uh, Dr. Rob Katanian, and Dr. Mercedes uh, Bagai are going to discuss uh, the community practice uh, committee and their work and also uh, uh, Dr. Bagai is going to introduce the speaker's catalog. Uh, so with that, I'm going to stop sharing. Uh, I'm going to pause sharing and just uh, um, give the floor to uh, Dr. John Mellinger, who is our current SAGES president. Well, Maria, thank you very much. And it's really a privilege to be part of this group tonight, to see some old friends and, and meet some new ones. Um, I... Uh, Welcome you to SAGES, those of you that are new members and those of you that may be here exploring uh, whether SAGES is a good community for you to plug into. Uh, I hope you'll find it a most welcoming place and a really informative call, I'm sure. Um, I'll just say briefly by way of my own experience that when I first encountered SAGES, <clears throat> I was uh, a fellow at the time and uh, when I went to the meeting, compared to some of the other meetings I was attending, uh, I was immediately impressed at how welcoming the environment was. Uh, I didn't feel like a junior person that needed to play a junior role. I didn't feel like my ideas were of a different category than those who were esteemed or thought leaders or um, maybe more advanced in their career path. I just had this sense that everybody was celebrating being together and learning together. And that has been true of this society over the whole course of, of my involvement with it. Uh, it's been a place where I can learn. It's been a place where I've formed some deep personal friendships. It's been a place where it has not been hard for me to get close to thought leaders and benefit from their experience. And where my own thoughts, which aren't always of thought leadership quality, are still welcomed. Uh, and that's what's made it a special place for me. Um, I will tell you just one quick story some of you may have heard before. Um, and then I'll stop with my welcome. But the story relates to my very early days in SAGES and a lesson I learned from it that I hope might be helpful to you. And had I learned sooner, it might have been helpful to me. But the lesson, basically the punchline to tell you before I tell you the story is the world belongs to those who show up and how you show up has a lot to do with uh, what you take away from uh, an experience like you can gain in Sages and what you'll ultimately be able to contribute. So the story was I, I was told as a, as a young person fresh out of fellowship, I should get assigned to a Sages committee. And that was how you would form deeper relationships and get to contribute. And I said, wonderful. And of course, I thought I was ready to be on all kinds of committees that were doing things that were well beyond my experience at that point. 
Uh, but they they were gracious and put me on a committee that was basically kind of our public relations committee at the time. And I felt like a fish out of water. I felt like I was um, trying to learn about marketing and didn't feel very good at it and wasn't sure I understood really what we were trying to accomplish. But instead of asking questions and learning and showing up, I kind of played a passive role when I went to my first few meetings. I did notice at the meetings that there was a young lady sitting across from me who was also fresh out of her fellowship. And though I wasn't sure she was any more fired up about Sage's public image uh, than I was, uh, she seemed to come and contribute. And if they said, hey, we need to do this, she'd say, I'll take that on, let me work on it. And she'd come back next time and have something to say that actually showed she'd thought about it. Well, okay, shorten the story, fast forward. About 12 years ago now, that young lady became the first woman to be president of SAGES, a lady named Joe Beisky, who's now my boss and CEO of the American Board of Surgery. And it took me over a decade longer to get to do some of the things Joe had done because it took me longer to learn that when you show up the way she did instead of the way I was showing up, uh, you, you learn things, you contribute, and you plug into a group. So what I would say to you is, this is, a, this is an amazing society. It's by far been the richest one for me in my career path. Uh, it's been a place to celebrate education, innovation, uh, many of those things at the very highest level within our field. And you'll hear more about that from Mike and others on the call. It's been a group that keeps thinking about who its base is, and you'll hear about that from um, Rob and Mercedes and the community practice group on the call. And I just hope you'll feel as, as, as welcomed as I did, and that maybe you'll accelerate your learning and experience compared to John Mellinger by uh, whatever way you get to plug in, uh, really showing up and being involved and, and contributing your best, and thereby, I'm sure, find uh, many opportunities and sages in the years ahead. Thanks, Maria, for the chance to, to join the group. No, thank you so much for uh, Dr. Mellinger. And that's a wonderful story about D Dr. Baisky, by the way. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to share my screen again. Um, let's see if I can do it. Maybe I can, maybe I can't. Can you see that? Yes. Yes, okay. I can. Awesome. Okay. Um, so if you just became a member, um, I first would like to congratulate you on becoming a new member of this vibrant surgical society. So we currently actually have over 7,000 members around the globe. Uh, and SAGES has definitely been the, for, the forefront and, um, of cutting edge uh, technology and education. Uh, but it actually didn't start like that. Um, it started as a, as a small society established in the 80s by two renegade surgeons. Uh, and this is one of my favorite quotes from Dr. Marx. Uh, there was a need for surgeons with common interests in gastrointestinal endoscopy to have the means to communicate and an organization comprised of surgeon endoscopists would have provided that opportunity. Um, so it did start as a small society, but currently we have opportunities and memberships across many surgical subspecialties, uh, including trauma, acute care, pediatric surgery, colorectal, bariatrics, uh, surgical oncology, uh, amongst others. So uh, SAGE's mission is to innovate, educate, and collaborate to improve patient care. Um, SAGE's vision is to uh, is reimagining surgical care for a healthier world. And our values are inclusivity, innovation, service, excellence, global community, and of course, fun. Um, so uh, what makes this society special? Well, um, as I mentioned, SAGES is the premier society dedicated to improve um, quality um, patient care through education, uh, research, innovation, leadership. Uh, and in addition, uh, SAGES provides a unique opportunity for you to gain entry into the gastrointestinal endoscopic uh, uh, profession, surgery profession uh, through a warm, fun, and uh, very supportive organization. So we have a few benefits and uh, you can apply for research grants, uh, get scholarship awards, career development awards. Uh, we do have the job board where uh, the different types of jobs are posted. Uh, also, we have courses for residents, fellows, surgeons, uh, training guidelines, publications, journals, manuals, 
very good discounts on Sages meetings and programs, uh, and also leadership uh, the fellowship through if you would like to join uh, one of our committees. Uh, we have currently over 40 volunteer committees, and it's a, through a self nomination, and the time for you to self nominate actually is now. Um, we also do have peer reviewed educational videos, uh, extensive networking capabilities. So the hands on courses. Uh, well, these are some of the examples of these in there for residents, fellows, practicing surgeons. Uh, they used to be virtual during COVID just because of what happened during COVID, but now, right now they're actually coming back and uh, we are offering these at the SAGES annual meeting that I'll briefly mention um, some information about and also they're available throughout around the, the, the year. So the free webinars, um, and you're probably mostly familiar with those. There's about three to five per year. They're given by the experts in the field. They do provide invaluable information. And here are some of the upcoming ones. It's actually one of uh, the first one is, I think on the, it's coming up on the 28th, I believe. And it's tools and strategies for effective communications in the operating room. And that's actually co-produced with the Association of Residency Administrators in Surgery. Uh, previous topics, and uh, Dr. Awad is very involved in this, the um, annual in-training exam, uh, the annual general surgery review course, which is part one and part two. This is actually very well, um, very well attended and viewed. Uh, also transition to practice, how to negotiate contracts, how to be a successful young surgeon. Uh, there was a webinar on, on FUSE and also bariatrics for general surgeons. Um, so in terms of uh, surgical education, um, SAGES is the premier uh, society for surgical education, and I think uh, Dr. Awad is going to talk about OWLs, uh, but we do have FLS, FES, views. we have a, a ton of abstracts, guidelines, images, uh, patient information brochures, uh, and information about procedures, uh, smart TAVIC, and of course, a lot of uh, peer-reviewed videos. So in terms of networking, uh, the, the Sages Facebook groups are a great example of how you can also utilize some of these resources to share cases, to ask questions, uh, to obtain um, expert opinions uh, for topics. So in terms of uh, um, the something new, the Shark Tank, uh, and that's currently actually Shark Tank 2022, 2023 now, uh, but in partnership with uh, Varia Ventures, Sages is continuing initiative to educate its uh, members about entrepreneurship uh, and engage and showcase in ventures uh, through the reimagined and funded Sage, Sages Shark Tank. So very, very close to the actual like Shark Tank that you see on the, the television. Um, and that has been fun. And so um, on the left over here was actually the winners from 2021. And then from 2022 is the, uh, the this laparoscopic pool sectioning device, the Vampiro, um, which is it sounds kind of funny. And um, uh, but it, it's a great device. So also some information about uh, next year's meeting, save the date. To, uh, so that will be March uh, 29th through April 1st, and we'll be in Montreal. Um, so a little bit about a, a personal experience. Um, I joined Sages as a resident uh, when I was uh, uh, doing my research years in 2013. And honestly, um, through this organization, like I have met so many people that have made me a better surgeon, um, a better educator, a better innovator. Um, but also I have created lifelong friendships uh, with people around the globe. Um, so thank you, Sages, for that. Um, and so for those of you that are interested in joining SAGES, apply today. It's an online application. Um, we have actually eliminated the sponsor letter. So now you have, uh, you only need a, a, a letter from a colleague for an active member membership. So some of these barriers uh, to membership are, are um, not there. And uh, membership categories, we have the active, affiliate, allied health, associate active, candidate, international student, and medical student. The international actually are, are several tiers uh, depending on the country. So with that being said, uh, we're more than happy to have any questions from you. And if you want, you can also contact us directly. And this is our email address. Uh, so with that being said, I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to pass the floor to uh, Dr. Linda Zeng. Great, thank you so much, Maria, for uh, that wonderful introduction, and Dr. Mellinger. Um, I, I share a very similar story, I think, to both uh, Maria and Dr. Mellinger. 
uh, in that I also joined Pages when I was a resident. Um, became a, I got involved very quickly with all the different committees. That was also the suggestion, like, oh, just get involved in a committee. And I suppose ended up signing up for like three or four. And so they told me I couldn't be on so many. Um, but uh, what I... Sorry, put myself on mute for a second. What I absolutely love about Sages is the fact that it is like a community. It's a very welcoming community that respects each other and respects like your opinions and your thoughts. And it's very easy to get involved. I think because it's a, even though it has like 7,000 members, it's, it's a very like sort of close knit community of surgeons. So people tend to know each other. People, the committees are very easy. It's very easy to speak up uh, and like listen to other people's opinions and easy to very easy to get involved. As you will see when we get involved, there's so many projects and so many committees. I think there's like 45 committees in total, somewhere around there. So lots of opportunities to get involved in each of those committees and they're all even equally as busy as Global Affairs. Um, but I am tasked to talk about Global Affairs, which is my, my favorite committee. But so, uh, for Global Affairs, our goal for SAGES is really to try and train and educate the surgeons abroad, mostly in low and middle income countries, and to get them more involved in laparoscopic surgery. Um, and we have accomplished this over the last 10 years. We have sort of developed this program called the Global Laparoscopic Advancement Program where it's a both now a virtual program and a on-site program where we go abroad for a week to a particular hospital and train the general surgeons there in microscopic skills and also sort of teach the teacher skills. It's been very popular. We, over the last five years, we've gone to seven different sites in Mexico and Costa Rica, and now we venturing into the continent of Africa. We just completed a site in Namibia this December. So uh, global affairs is a great, if you are in any way interested in sort of global surgery or being active in teaching surgeons abroad, I think this is a great committee for you to join. Like I said, there's various ways you can be involved. Um, and it can be, it can stem from, you know, helping out with the virtual sessions where you are doing for a couple hours here and there to teach a session, um, to being much more active and um, going on one of these trips and also more, and if a lot of people also have a lot of connections as well um, countries that they need to have a program like this, and we would love to hear your opinions there too. Um, I, I know everyone's time is very delicate and very limited, so you can only join some of the committees once and still be active with the birth, but I highly recommend you to join this one because it really is um, a wonderful committee that you feel like your invested time is worthwhile and you get an invested return for it, not just from the content that you get from Sages, because I think Sages does have an extensive amount of educational content on its website, uh, specific for laparoscopy and endoscopy, but also in terms of networking for the surgeons, like the surgeons on the Global Affairs Committee from everywhere, from uh, Buenos Aires in Argentina, from Brazil, from India, from uh, it's from really a international crew of uh, of surgeons, and they and a lot of them do go abroad with us to these different countries. So if you're an international surgeon, definitely try to go both of those. Um, okay, I will stop talking and stop rambling so, to, and give other people a chance. Thank you, Dr. Zhang. Um, it's great to hear what is going on in, in, on your committee. And so next is Dr. Michael Awad, and he'll be discussing the RAF committee. Maria, thank you so much for uh, this opportunity to uh, chat with the uh, group, and thank you all very much for making time to uh, be a part of this. 
Um, Maria, thanks so much for your leadership in organizing us together and a um, uh, uh, pleasure to be here. Again, my name is Michael Awad. I'm a, one of the minimally invasive surgeons at Washington University in St. Louis. And I was just thinking back, hard to believe, but this is my 20th year as part of uh, SAGES. This year I'm celebrating that, that uh, 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 big milestone. <laughs> Thank you, Carla. And uh, I was thinking back, you know, to that time, I was uh, also a lab resident in my surgical residency program at Johns Hopkins, and we had a, a new chair, Julie Freischlag, who is a, a vascular surgeon, not, not kind of who you might think of as the typical clientele for SAGES, but she knew of SAGES uh, well as one of the premier kind of uh, surgical societies, and so you know, when she heard about kind of my interests, um, this was even before I decided I wanted to do minimally invasive surgery, but interest in education. She said, Michael, you need to look at this group. And so I similarly, you know, got on, uh, became a member and, and, you know, got on committees and, you know, was very quickly, you know, um, adopted by the Sages family. They took me under their wing. Um, and it's just been um, a real welcoming opportunity ever since. Um, tonight, I'm going to talk about what's called RAFT, R-A-F-T, which is a resident and fellow training committee. Um, and it's really, uh, uh, again, just a privilege to have the opportunity to, to, to serve SAGES in this way. Um, you know, SAGES, as you heard in the mission, education is a big part of uh, what we do. And uh, for me personally, it helped to foster my career um, as a young surgical educator. Um, it's not just about, you know, laparoscopes and endoscopes. Uh, it was also recognizing um, its role in helping to foster the education of, of trainees and practicing physicians. Um, I got my first career development award from SAGES. And it um, helped to um, support a, a project I was doing on, on surgical education. No other society provided me with that. And that was um, a real, real foundation for the rest of my career in surgical education since then. So um, uh, anyway, I do have a couple slides that I'll just uh, share just for the sake of discussion. But we will um, uh, welcome the questions and, and so forth, too. Uh, so hopefully you can uh, see this uh, coming up. This is the RAF team. So while I chair the team, it is, uh, it is a team because it's actually one of the largest committees, um, uh, one of the larger committees that, that SAGES has. So we have a lot of folks working on it. You can see the co-chairs, uh, Denise G., Jake Greenberg, and Brian Davis. And we have terrific staff. Uh, that support and do the yeoman's work of, of, the, uh, of the committee. And this is our goals, and it really comes down to three simple things. The first and foremost is that for residents and fellows, we aim to develop high-quality curricula using fundamental educational principles. Um, number two is our committee also helps to create standards and criteria for program accreditation and training certification. And we'll talk a lot more about that here shortly. And also very importantly is that our committee is, um, the core mission is to foster professional development and mentorship of our learners. So how do we do that? We mentioned the fellowship. So I think, you know, not a lot of people know about um, obviously the ACGME, and its role in uh, accrediting different residency and fellowship programs. But I think many of you know there are many um, other types of fellowships that have um, a different society, the Fellowship Council. SAGES has put forth a number of criteria for the fellowships that you see here. And many of you may be in these fellowships or may have um, uh, those fellowships at your own institutions. The first one that SAGES is sponsored is called Advanced GI MIS, still one of the largest of the uh, non-ACGB fellowships. More recently, uh, SAGES put forth a flexible endoscopy fellowship. And then for the first time, SAGES led the initiative in creating a uh, multi-society, jointly sponsored foregut fellowship. And this one's, this one's really exciting and off to it. 
a great start. Other things that we do on the fellowship side of things, um, we were really instrumental, our committee, in trying to help provide guidance during COVID as to what should be the case requirements. Um, that came to our committee for recommendations, and those recommendations were implemented nationwide during the pandemic. Um, I mentioned the Flexible Endoscopy Fellowship and the Forget Fellowship, but also another one that we're working on hot off the presses is a new hernia fellowship. So this too will be a joint uh, multi-society fellowship we're doing with the America's Hernia Society. And this is to create kind of an abdominal wall core health slash hernia fellowship for the nation. So this one we hope to pilot this coming academic year. And that's some of the work you can do on, on our committee. Towards our work on uh, career development and professional development and mentorship, uh, for the first time in uh, this coming fall, we're going to have a SAGES sponsored fellowship career development course. Um, this will be held in Cleveland, and it will be an opportunity for fellows across the country to come together and learn about opportunities, how to get your, your career started, how to negotiate contracts, you know, how to, to uh, do your first uh, academic or private practice job. And then also we're working with the Fellowship Council on a national curriculum for all the above mentioned uh, fellowships that I, that I described. So a lot, a lot of really exciting things going on the, on the fellowship side. And uh, the residency programs as well. SAGES has a big part of residency. And as you probably know, um, there are a few curricula that are mandated for all surgical residents in the United States. And those are include FLS and FES, and those came from SAGES. And uh, along those lines, we're kind of continuing and carrying on that torch. Maria also kindly mentioned some of the webinars that our committee puts on. One of the one that we've had uh, for almost 10 years now is the uh, kind of absite general surgery review uh, prep. We have over 2000 registrants from around the world that sign up for that, that program. It's a really fun, engaging uh, program and a, a wonderful tradition that we carry for the year after year. Maria also highlighted some of the hands-on courses we do for residents and fellows, including robotics, endoscopy, um, and basic and advanced laparoscopic skills, and so forth. Our committee is also involved in identifying and nominating um, a trainee to serve on the board of governors of SAGES, kind of the highest level committee, and that that's as a resident or fellow, they can serve on that. And just this coming, I just got off a call with my co-chair, Jake Greenberg, just before this about a new oral examination prep course that we're going to be doing uh, coming this summer. We had a pilot with it that was tremendously successful, and we're going to be kicking that off uh, this summer. And then also we work very closely with other, other societies, one of which is the Residency Coordinators uh, Group, AREPS. Um, if you are interested in academic productivity, that is putting out abstracts and manuscripts, our committee is uh, 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 robust in kind of helping support people who want to get a manuscript out there from maybe just the basic um, idea. It's just kind of in the inception phase. You know, I have an idea and I, I you know, not sure how to run with it. And we try to help kind of crystallize that idea and put it out there to analyzing the data, to submitting it. And so we have a number of manuscripts each year that come out of our committee that have a national impact. And then finally, I just want to highlight a number of things that uh, Maria uh, mentioned and, and also um, uh, John Mellinger. You know, for all of the committees and certainly for RAFT as well, um, you know, the, the more you put into it is the more you get out of it. And so with our committee, as well as all of them, you know, come to the meetings and be a part of it. It's really a very collegial, collaborative place. It's welcoming. We encourage all of our members, whether it's your first day or you've been on it for years, to be a part, communicate. Volunteer for any of the courses that I talked about, the webinars that we put. Throw out a manuscript idea. 
And then most importantly, come to Sages. We, we meet at Sages and we have a, a wonderful network where we get together, get to know each other and uh, support each other. So um, anyway, um, uh, really excited to uh, be here this evening and um, happy to take any uh, uh, questions afterwards if we have time. Thanks, Maria. Thank you, Dr. Ewan. Uh, I'm always amazed by the work that the RAP committee actually has, is doing. It's uh, such a vibrant and energetic committee um, and a great way to get involved if you're interested in education. Do you just uh, do you mind uh, just mentioning uh, about the work of OWLS and the progress with that? Um, I, I mentioned that you, you might uh, talk about it. I just wanted to see if you had any updates. Sure, Maria. Thank you. And um... Uh, ALS is uh, uh, what Maria is referring to is what's called uh, Organization Wide Learning Management System, OWLS or ALS conveniently. It's actually a, a part of even a broader initiative, what's called the Education Council at, at SAGES. And it's a, um, a big yeoman's effort to basically create, you know, a portal that would serve up really all of the educational content in a very nicely presented, easily digestible, readily accessible uh, portal. And so um, this is, again, recognizing uh, Sage's huge education component. Um, we have a lot of content, but we wanted to get it out there to people in, in a readily digestible way. So that that OWL's uh, portal is live and, and all of the fundamentals programs, the didactic components will be there, um, the master's program that's being worked on and many other curricula. So really exciting project. Thank you so much again, Dr. Ewan. Um, and next we have uh, Dr. Rob Catania, um, who is going to discuss some of the work of uh, the Community Practice uh, Committee, followed by uh, Dr. Bagai, who will be discussing the speaker's catalog. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I'm getting all kind of little pop-ups on my screen, so I'm trying to <laughs> get them out of the way. So I'm Rob Catania. Nice to meet you. I am one of the co-chairs along with Mercy Day, who's going to speak in a second, uh, for the Community Practice Committee. And uh, community practice is important to SAGES in that about 80% of our membership identifies themselves as community practice surgeons. So there are a lot of academic surgeons um, at SAGES, but there are many more community practice surgeons. And so one of the things that's unique about SAGES is we spend a lot of time thinking of, you know, how do, can we keep the community practice surgeons engaged and involved with the society? So I'm going to try to share my screen and hopefully it won't mess this up because uh, I've been known to from time to time. So I'm going to start sharing and then I'm going to start my slideshow here. And so the community practice uh, committee um, you know, we, our mandate is to sort of organize the efforts around um, the community practice surgeons for the SAGES membership. Um, and what we really do um, is we've got a bunch of different um, initiatives that we are currently involved with to help um, promote community practice surgeons throughout the organization. I'm going to speak about the um, speaker catalog in a second, and that is a, um, a system that we have designed to allow um, people who aren't in academic surgery to still participate in our national meetings. So if you've got a lot of experience, if you've got a lot of training and you spend a lot of time doing clinical work, taking care of patients, we still wanna hear from you. Um, not only do we wanna hear from um, you know, professors in large institutions, but we also wanna hear from high volume community surgeons who are doing great work around the country. Um, so I'll talk to you about the speaker catalog in a second. Another uh, initiative we have is the Collaborative Brand Rounds Initiative. And um, as Michael pointed out, you know, plenty of opportunities for you to stay engaged in academic medicine, even if you're not in an academic practice. So perhaps you're working like myself at a small community hospital, but you still, you miss the environment of that academic collaboration that you had with all of your colleagues um, through training. So we have a collaborative ground rounds process. What we do is we build ground rounds um, presentations um, and make them available to all of the SAGES members. Uh, so if you're a SAGES member and you wanna give a high quality ground rounds talk um, on 
forgot surgery, for example, you can go right to our to the website, download that, and then you can use that slide set as a, as a building block to give your presentation so you don't have to spend hours and hours doing that research. Um, we also um, are working on practice mentoring, uh, or sorry, practice mentorship workshops. And uh, Mercedes is gonna speak for a second uh, about business of surgery webinar series that we're building. Uh, Mercedes being like a phenomenal general surgeon who's involved in all aspects of general surgery, but also a really, really savvy business person who um, spends a lot of her time um, building her personal practice and business. Um, so we're trying to share all of the experience that we have as SAGE's members in the community uh, environment so that um, especially younger members are able to, to take advantage of that knowledge. So the speaker's catalog real quickly um, is a way for you to uh, advertise yourself. And, uh, you know, as surgeons, it's sort of one of those things we don't like to do. We don't like to talk about how good we are, how knowledgeable we are. We sort of like to let our, our experience speak for itself. But in an organization of 7,000 members, sometimes that's hard to do, particularly if you're not working at Johns Hopkins or uh, Mass General. And so the speaker's catalog is a place where you can um, post your credentials. I'm just showing you right here. This is the, the, a screenshot of the, um, the starting page for the speaker's catalog. And suppose you wanted to give a talk about bariatric surgery. You, you could put your name in there. You could give a little brief bio. You could post videos of yourself giving lectures. And then people who are, are looking for speakers at national meetings like SAGES can go through there, say, oh, here's, a, here's an individual who's got a lot of experience in the topic that I'm looking at, and I need a speaker, so I'm gonna bring them up uh, at, and put them on the podium, give them an opportunity to speak. Um, this is just what you know, my personal um, bio looks like on the speaker's catalog. And um, I will be giving a, a talk later um, this year at the SAGES meeting um, picked up off of the speaker's catalog. So it really, it works. It gives you a, a chance to sort of um, advertise your own experience and uh, allow you to become an integral member of the society, even though you may be practicing in a smaller hospital in a place that doesn't typically get a lot of notoriety. So I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna try to stop sharing my screen. I hope that worked. Um, there we go, stop share. And then I'm going to let um, uh, I'm going to introduce Mercy Day, and she is going to talk to you a little bit about her project right now. Sorry, hi. Can you hear me? Yes, we okay. can. Great. Hi, hi. I'm Mercy Day Bagai. I'm out in Los Angeles. I'm amazed that we have 54 people on this webinar. Good job, everyone. Um, and I'm curious as to, I don't know how many people are residents, how many are academic, how many are actually in private or community setting on this call. Um, but I'm hoping that there are enough people that what Rob and I have to say actually pertains to them. Um, uh, I'll start with a little bit of my history with SAGES. I'm also celebrating my 20th year with SAGES. Um, thank you, Carla. Uh, and I started as a chief resident um, looking for a job. <laughs> I actually came to Sages because last minute I decided I didn't want to do vascular surgery and I wanted to laparoscopic. And what's a shortcut in finding a fellowship? And let's go to Sages and see if I can find a job on site. Uh, and believe it or not, I did. Uh, I found a fellowship on site, um, talked to a couple of people who happened to have an opening and I found a fellowship. And that's how I got hooked into SAGES um, and have been coming ever since for the past 20 years. Um, but I'm not academic, I'm in private practice. And from the get go, after finishing my two year fellowship, I went into private practice. And so, Everyone always asks me, especially in my community, why do you keep going back to Sages? And why do you every year have to take time off to go to this meeting? Uh, and honestly, um, there's a lot of reasons. Um, but main thing, and I think most important, if you are in a private practice, 
practice setting like me is to keep up to date. If you want to be the cutting edge surgeon in your community, uh, you got to keep up to date. Otherwise, after 20 years, you're still doing things the way you did in residency. And I found that Sages was the one kind of venue by which I always kept abreast. And I was always the first surgeon in my community doing the newest thing. Um, but besides that, networking is a huge deal. And I think when you are in a private practice or in a community setting, it's very isolating, uh, especially depending on what your setup is. If you're solo like me, or if you have a lot of competition in your community and other surgeons don't share cases or don't share intellectual like you know kind of decision making or M&Ms are mostly antagonistic than cooperative uh, then you find yourself very isolated and I think being involved in a in an organization that is not only educational but also friendly is very important to keep your career uh, kind of um, up and you know uh, always up to date. Um, that's how, that's why I stayed abreast in Sages. And I, honestly, the first 10 years, like, jo like John, I just attended. And I was very content with just attending because there wasn't a single meeting that I didn't walk home away from with a new pearl or a new trick. Or I used to attend every video session and learn a new technique and a new trick that I could do readily do it on Monday. But the last 10 years practice of surgery has been very difficult in the community setting. There's been a lot of challenges, uh, non-clinical challenges. And uh, I found myself now being torn away from SAGES to ACS and some of the other meetings that address some of these other non-clinical issues that I was having. And so I decided to kind of carve my own way within SAGES to make sure SAGES also address some of those issues that we were having. And the community practice came about with just literally three or four of us sitting around venting as a task force as to what challenges we were having. And then we did the survey and we found out that we're not alone, that like Rob said, almost 80 percent of the membership is community practice. And we actually have uh, an obligation to address some of these challenges that we're all facing within our society. So I became more involved. And so now I'm actually one of the co-chairs of community practice, but I'm also involved with advocacy. And that's one thing that I kept started on very early on because I wanted to figure out what are these rules and regulations that are preventing us from practicing medicine the way we want to practice and how can I change it? Um, and so advocacy, the advocacy committee has helped us a lot. Uh, ha helped me a lot to learn some of the challenges at national level and see what I can do at a local and regional and state level to try and change some of the rules here in California that we have to face. Uh, and I owe a lot of that to Sage's Advocacy Committee. Um, but uh, And then within community practice, since I'm here representing community practice, uh, we started talking uh, most recently in the past few years about what can we, how can we empower our membership who choose not to do academia or even within academia? I think the, the kind of environment has changed. A lot of people are in productivity and they actually have to understand the business because they're demanded to uh, kind of demanded to respond to the business aspects of the organization as well. How can we educate our membership? Because most of us come out of residency not knowing anything about it. And so right now, one of my pet projects is this business of surgery webinar series. And I'm amazed that uh, within our community practice committee, 25 of our membership has actually signed up for the different uh, uh, kind of little seminar breakout seminars. And we have 35 subject matters that we're working on right now concurrently uh, of different aspects of business of surgery. And we're going to have uh, kind of roundtable sessions of uh, three or four surgeons at each of these. We're going to try and video them and create a catalog, library catalog on everything from what are the kind of, what do you need to know to start a private practice to how do you negotiate with a payer or how do you negotiate your first contract? What do you do when you get sued? What, what should you or should you not do? Um, how do you pick insurance? What insurances do you need? Um, you know, there's so many aspects of practicing medicine in this day and age that we're so 
uh, ignorant about coming out of residency and training. And if we were just empowered with the knowledge, we do a lot better at uh, in our performance. So anyways, that's, that's what I'm here to represent to you. And I hope that those on the call who are not academically involved or associated with an academic institution feel welcome. Um, there's a lot of us that are now vocal within society and always available to for mentorship and guidance. And uh, anyways, welcome. Whatever else I can answer, I'd be happy to. Thank you so much. Um, thank you, Dr. Bagai. Thank you, Dr. Katanya. Um, I always feel like um, Sage's looks of ways to involve with community practice surgeons and uh, um, interact. And you are such an integral part of our society, as you said. Um, so this concludes our onboarding session slash like get to know Sages. Uh, please post any questions uh, in the chat. We're more than happy to answer that uh, and any any questions. Um, and this is only what's happening with three to four of the committee. So unfortunately, we don't have uh, we have so many other like ways to get involved in so many committees, as you heard, over 40 committees that unfortunately 46 minutes uh, can honestly encompass all the work that Sages does. Um, so please let us know if you have any questions. Um, don't hesitate to uh, email us. Uh, I think Carla and Diori posted membership at sages.org. Uh, I would like to thank all the participants uh, and the amazing talks by uh, doc in the leadership also of Dr. Mellinger, Dr. Zhang, um, Awad, uh, Katanya, and Bagai. I would like I, I would love to thank our amazing Sages staff. Um, uh, and uh, uh, again, this is just a fraction of what goes behind the scenes. So if there's no any other questions, uh, have a good night. And thank you again. Uh, welcome to Sages and hope to see you in Montreal.